this. You like this? This chop. All right, so when it comes to animating stuff with keyframes in Premiere Pro, there's really only a couple things you need to know. One is when we're dealing with anything, whether it's a regular clip like this, or it's something that's been auto reframed, I prefer not to animate within the basic motion options right here. I like to go back to my effects and I like to type in transform. So the one that we did before in distort here and drag this onto any clip that I'm gonna animate with. So I'm gonna drag transform onto this one, this one, and this one, just so we have it on all of them to start with. Now to actually animate, all we have to do is click on our clip that we wanna animate and then scroll this thing down to transform where you can see all the things that we can mess with. The main thing to know is that these little clocks here, this is how you toggle an animation on. So if, for example, we want to animate scale, we would first click on this, boom, and you can see that it turns blue when it's on, and there's a keyframe that's added right here, wherever your blue line is, either on your timeline or right here. We can move these around. You don't have to leave the keyframe there. You can click on it and move it if you don't want it in that spot, but just know that that's how you get an animation started. Okay, and then obviously to animate it, you need to create a keyframe elsewhere down your clip. So I'm moving this down. And to add a new keyframe, you click on this thing right here. Boom. That puts another diamond like dot here. And we just have to make sure that the settings for these two things are different. And that's how they would animate from one to the next. So for this one over here, I'm going to change this to, let's say, 150 or so. And this one over here is still 100. So you can use these little triangles here to go from keyframe to keyframe. So I can jump from one to the next and you can see that my image changes. This one's at 100 right here for scale and I bump this one up to 150. So if we watch that now, now it scales up from 100 to 150 once it goes from this spot to this spot on the timeline. Once you've put your keyframes in, if that's all you want is for it to scale up for the duration of the clip, then just click on the keyframe and drag it to the end and click this one and drag it to the start. So now it's gonna scale up from start to finish of the entire clip. Notice that the further the keyframes are away from each other, the slower the animation goes and the closer keyframes are to each other, the faster it's gonna go. So watch here right now, it's gonna go and zoom in much faster. On a side note, just know that anytime I deal with animating scale, I always toggle on position as well, because you can see my daughter's head gets cut off there. So I'm gonna toggle on position and I'm gonna match this keyframe. I'm gonna drag it and see that line comes up. I matched it with this one. And then I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna put another keyframe and match that one with this one. So now, at the start here, this is good for position at this scale, but if I jump ahead to this keyframe, now I can move this down to adjust the position so it fits properly as well. So now if we watch this zoom, it's gonna go zoop and zoom in properly. And then obviously you can add more keyframes if you wanna continue animating on any clip by just moving your playhead down a little bit. And just so you know, I bumped this up to 300 instead of 150, so it zooms in a little bit more. So I'm gonna move the playhead down and I'm gonna add keyframes both for scale and position. So it'll hold at the exact same position and scale from this keyframe to this one. And then I'm just gonna go about the same distance here afterwards and add two more. So right here and right here. And now I want these two to match the position and scale of these two. So if I go back, these were the original settings, 100, 1080, and 1920. So I'm gonna go back to these last ones and I don't have to punch in those numbers. I can just click this reset parameter and reset parameter if I want it to go back to what it was at the start. So now if we watch this, it's just gonna zoom in. It's gonna hold for a bit and then zoom back out. Now, the last thing you need to do if you're using the transform effect to do your animations is to uncheck this use compositions shutter box and change the shutter angle to 180. This is just gonna create a little bit more of a natural movement by adding some motion blur whenever you do your keyframing and animations. Actually, you know what, I lied. There's one more thing you should do as well. 
Anytime you have a clear animation from one set of keyframes to another, then you should do this as well. Highlight the first set together, right click, go down to temporal interpolation, and select ease out. For the second set, do the opposite. Select them, right click, temporal interpolation, and select ease in. So you can do that for these other ones as well. And then that'll also help just kind of ease, as it says, ease in and out the transition of how your keyframes operate. Now to explain the temporal interpolation thing a little bit better, I'm going to apply a slightly different animation to this text right here. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go back up and still add transform on. So I'm going to type it in effects there, drag transform on, find it in my effect controls over here, right there. And then I'm just going to move the playhead to where I want it to end up at the end. I'm going to put a keyframe for just position this time. And then I'm going to go back to the start, hit a new keyframe, and just use the vertical parameter here to slide it off the screen down there. So if we look at it just with the basic keyframes, it slides in pretty consistently to there. I might even move it over to make it a little bit slower. Okay, so it just slides in and has a consistent rate. Okay, so just like before, to make this animation look a little bit better, I'm going to scoot down here, uncheck this, and change the shutter angle to 180. Then I'm going to head back up, and I'm going to click on this little triangle thing right here. And what I want you to notice is that this right here is like a little graph that explains our animation. Since these are both linear keyframes, this bottom line means it's not moving at all. Then it jumps up and then it consistently moves across the screen until it gets here and then abruptly stops moving again. But look what happens when I right click on here and go temporal interpolation and ease out. So now it slowly comes in. So the higher this mountain is, the faster the text is moving. So it moves a little bit faster here and then it quickly ends and stops moving. But now if I go here and go temporal interpolation ease in, you can see that it goes slow and then goes faster in the middle and then slows. So let's look at how that looks now. You see what kind of drifts into place. But we can enhance that even more by clicking on them. And you see these handles here. I can click this one and I'm going to slide it to the left to make the mountain go higher here. So it's going to go faster in and then slowly come into place. But I'm also going to grab this handle and increase it even more. So now it's going to go super fast in and then gradually ease into place. Okay, so if I go back, boom, fast, and then really slowly drifts into place. And you can see that motion blur on that text. Boom, and slides into place. All right, so now let me show you how to do the jump cut into a close-up effect. So what you're going to do is find the spot that you want to jump cut into. So I'm going to do it right where my eyebrow goes up right there. You're going to hit a keyframe for scale and for position. And then right down here, next to the play button to the left, you're going to go one step back, one frame back, boom. And then you're going to put keyframes there, boom and boom. So you're going to be like right beside each other. If I zoom in here, I can't zoom in anymore. You can see them kind of overlapping. Then make sure to click either one of these two to go back to the second keyframe. And you're just going to scale that up first. So as much as you want to zoom in and then reposition it to wherever you want. So I'm just going to go to like right there. And now when we watch this one, it's going to go from the regular wide shot and just jump right into that close up. And basically you want to have it hold there as long as you want. Find the spot where you want it to stop, put two more keyframes in, and then use this one this time to go one frame forward and go keyframe, keyframe. And then you're going to put this back to 100 and this back to the start. But instead of putting in all those numbers, just hit this arrow. That means reset and this one reset. So now when we watch that, it's going to jump in and then jump back. Now, if that's too quick, then, you know, for me, I'd probably end it like right there. So I'm going to take these two, this set, move them over. So now it jumps in and then it goes back. To watch other videos like this one and learn more about editing vertical videos, make sure to check out one of the videos linked on the screen right now.